Welcome to a new year and a new season of now. Let's go inside the next big financial crisis. If the shenanigans on Wall Street have you rattled, wait until you see what's been happening with your credit cards. Stay with us. Now on PBS. On the Road with host David Brancaccio and senior correspondent Maria Inojosa. The holidays are over, the new year is here, and it is time to pay the piper. Typically that means the credit card bills. But when you get to that grim chore in the coming days, read the fine print carefully. It's very possible the envelope from the credit card company contains some changes. Higher interest rates, lower credit limits, all sorts of things that experts say could add up to the next wave of the credit crisis. But can regulators act in time? Amy Booker produced our report. Francine Adams, a divorced mom who raised four children, is battling credit card debt at a time in her life when she thought the struggles were finally over. I actually, uh, when my youngest daughter moved out, returned to school at 45 to uh, recreate myself. And I went to LaSalle University and I earned my bachelor's degree in computer science. And uh, that's when my life really began to change. Francine went on to get her master's degree and moved to Florida. She landed a job working for a cruise line company and for the first time in her life made enough money to buy a home, a modest condo near Miami. It was very important for me to be um, living the American dream, like, you know, getting my own home. But the dream is in jeopardy. First, crazy gas prices last summer hit her employer hard. They made a decision to... to uh, lay off 10 percent of the company. At the time she lost her job, Francine owed $16,000 on her credit cards, which she used to visit her children in Philadelphia. I had actually stopped using my credit cards, and I was just basically trying to pay them off. What I was doing was accelerating my payments to make them come down even faster. But um, I did that for maybe three or four months, and Bank of America increased my monthly payment. They sent me a letter saying that they were increasing my monthly payment to help me pay off my debt faster. But I was already doing that and eliminating the interest when I was doing it. So paying extra was no longer an option but a requirement, which became a real burden when Francine lost her job. But when she called Bank of America asking for a new payment plan, Francine says they turned her down. It seems to me that Bank of America is not consumer-oriented at all. On the contrary, Nessa Fettis says, her industry is being proactive in helping consumers in distress. A lot of card companies aren't waiting for the customer to call them. They're actually reaching out to the customers that they've identified who may be struggling and trying to work something out with them, maybe lowering the interest um, and sometimes forgiving some of the balance. Really? They're reaching out to lower rates? Yes. Yes. It's going to depend on the... It's going to be very individual, though. When we reached out to Bank of America for comment on their lending practices, they declined an interview but sent a statement. We offer a number of tools to assist customers, such as waiving or ceasing fees and reducing interest in connection with monthly payment programs. But when Francine Adams called, none of these tools were made available. Hello, Francine. Unable to get help directly from the bank, Francine turned to a nonprofit called Consolidated Credit Counseling Services based in Fort Lauderdale. Calls to Consolidated for help have jumped 80% in the last year. Prices were a little bit higher. Francine's counselors have analyzed her debt and are now going to bat for her. And I've not used this card. All of that over the limit is all uh, fees and penalties. Critics say it is those fees and penalties that are pushing many people in debt over the edge. Many are so overwhelmed that they feel they have only one option left. We're talking bankruptcy. There were over one million personal filings in 2008. That's an estimated 30% jump from the year before. And in Florida, the spike was even higher, over 65% more filings than in 2007. 
money order, a check, either way. For now, the phones are running hot at Consolidated Credit Counseling Services, where Francine Adams is starting to see results. They were also gracious enough to send me a very nice letter. Washington Mutual has already responded to her counselor with a new payment plan that works for one of Francine's cards. Their letter said, we understand that you have a life change situation, and they said, we'll be happy to give you a payment of $58 a month, and you just continue to pay that until your account is paid off. And Bank of America has come around. Just days after our interview with Francine, the bank agreed to lower her interest rate. So you invested a lot of time and attention on trying to bring some order to your finances. Why are you spending that amount of time? What are you fighting for? I'm fighting to maintain uh, my American dream. And I'm seeing now the way the economy is going that um, even with the best efforts, that people are just falling along the wayside. And I don't want to become a statistic. Let me guess, you're probably thinking about your own credit cards right now. Get tips on protecting your credit and managing your cards from a financial professional. It's on our website. She will also be answering your email questions. PBS.org is the place to start. Connect to now online at pbs.org.